This is a new out of the box review of Tractor Supply Company's Groundwork Pro Series dump cart 1400 pound capacity. They have a model with a 600 pound capacity. The list price on this is $129.99. I got it on sale in March of 2015 for $99.99 and it got good reviews on their website four and a half stars out of five so here we are bringing it home in the back of the car if you're uh, slightly built you're gonna have a heck of a time the box is quite heavy I I can't find a weight on it if I do I'll let you know but it's got to be well over 60 70 pounds like a big sack of cement in a box these are the features of the cart. It has four wheels. Not your two wheel variety. The uh, handle it says converts from uh, pulling with your hand to attaching to your tractor hitch. I'm using put it on a Cub Cadet. Little tool tray. And it is made in China part number 1006411 I looked for carts on Craigslist and I missed out on one a few months ago somebody called before I did but I couldn't find one for under a hundred dollars it still had its tailgate and still had air in its tires so I think I got a pretty good deal on a hundred dollars here so Come on, find out what's in the box with me. I'll show you what you're going to get if you buy the Pro Series dump cart from Tractor Supply Company. As you can see, everything's strapped in there pretty good. What I'm going to do is uh, slit all the sides off the box rather than try and lift that out of the box with a pocket knife. Just go down and tear down all four corners and lay the box out open flat and I'll assemble it right on top of the cardboard so I can see all the parts that fall around on my dirty garage floor. I only sliced two of the uh, sides of the box at the corner. Uh, the rest of it when I pushed on just popped right apart. So the whole box is laying flat now. We'll open up the package. It's all strapped in here. Okay, I removed the plastic bag and the top cardboard piece that was covering up the load. You can see what's packed in here. See a tire peeking out. This looks like the tool tray that goes on. There's all four tires. And here's the owner's manual. We'll have to look at the find the assembly instructions. I don't know if they're in here yet or not. I would say allow yourself 15 minutes to get it out of the box and unpacked, and here's what you got. You got 17 individual pieces. The tub, that work tray, which I haven't taken a bubble wrap off of yet, the four tires, the handle, the framing, hitch stuff. A really nice card with all the hardware on it, so it's not packed loose. It's all... Uh, nicely carded there, I like that. And nine pages of assembly instructions in English and nine in Spanish. And a thing to see if you're miss, missing any parts, who to call. Cart busters. So, uh, one reviewer said he took two hours to assemble it on uh, tractor supplies reviews. Another one said that the way the pictures and the instructions were laid out in the manual that he put some parts on upside down until he figured out that you had to use your brain a little bit better and he wasted a half hour taking some parts back off. So I'm not going to show all the assembly steps. I really wanted to show you what you're getting for your $99 or $129 depending on whether you get it on sale or not. And if I come across anything unusual in the assembly, I'll let you know about it. And I'll give you the list of tools that I used.
so that you know what you'll have to have if you start this uh, project and get your tools lined up. I'm very excited. The tires have air in them. And here's, here's something you need to know. If you go to a hardware store and you look at just one of those tires, it's rare you're going to be able to get one for less than 29 bucks. So basically you have $120 worth of tires. And uh, so I think this is a pretty good deal for 99 bucks. Another feature on this cart that you don't get on a lot of them are these places where you can put a slat of wood in to make your own height. Uh, you know, put a box around the outside. If you're going to carry something light like leaves or something, you can increase the height of the tub. The tub looks to be about 10 inches to 11 inches deep. I didn't throw a tape on it. It's a really sturdy tub. I can see it would last for a long time. There's uh, nine holes in the tub where bolts will go. I'm going to use this uh, a lot for carrying water up to my garden. If you look at my other YouTube videos, you'll see my garden, and it's probably 100 yards or 75 yards from the house, and uh, hauling water up there is a bit of a chore. I'll attach this to my tractor, and I can fill it full of jugs or just fill it full of water. It won't leak. Just haul my water up that way. It'll be great. Of course, I have a lot of other chores I'll use it for, too. But that's what you get in the box. The instructions say all I need is a Phillips screwdriver and a metric socket set or two adjustable wrenches. I have a few metric sockets. I'll guarantee I one of the right ones. The hardware card is really nice. This is labeled Step 1 step two, step three, so every time you cut a different step in the instructions, you have the hardware for it, but you have to pay attention because in the first step, there's four of one kind of bolt, two of another. They all came out of the same location on the card. So we're attaching the uh, two chunks, front frame and uh, front axle assembly. I still haven't found out which ones they are, but I just wanted you to pay attention at the hardware can be different inside the same pack of the steps. So far I'm impressed with the way this is uh, laid out and what came in the box. A couple of tips. These, uh, we used to call them carriage bolts that have the square underneath the head. They're not all that easy to get in, but I didn't tighten any of them. I just put them in one at a time because you have to have a little play in there to get them to get down through. And these next two smaller ones, you have to swivel this part coming off the hitch and then swivel this part around to get the holes lined up. The, whenever you pick it up, it won't be laying like it showed in a picture. So you have to swivel everything around to get the holes to line up. Always put the washer next to the nut, not underneath the head of the bolt. We've completed assembly instruction one. We used a ratchet with a 12 millimeter socket on the two smaller bolts on the end of this here. And we used a 13 millimeter socket on the four bigger bolts across the bottom there. Step two is attaching the front struts. We have two sets of struts, one front and one back. According uh, to the pictures that I can determine, the front struts have the same angle on both ends where they're bent, and the rear struts have this one angle on one end and a different angle on the other. So I'm going to assume these are the front struts because that's kind of like what the picture looks like in the uh, parts page. I made an executive decision that when assembling the struts, put them under the bar so that the square head on the underside of this carriage bolt goes through the frame. If you put it on top of the bar then you're not catching all the squareness. So you can't tell by the diagram which way they want you to do it but I'm putting mine underneath. And I think one of the key things to remember is assemble this on top of the box cardboard four so you're not scratching up and making rust spots for down the road on your paint. This unit is very well painted I'm very impressed with the quality so far, but if you're rolling around on a concrete floor, you're going to create a lot of places where you scratch off the paint. 
and make rust 10 years down the road and you'll be under there probably painting your cart but uh, I re highly recommend assembling it right on the cardboard box flatten it out flattens out nice and easy well there's my first mistake I was bragging about how you're supposed to put these bolts in I'll put the strut struts on the underside facing down hell they're supposed to go clean up here I think I'm going to put this part on first then I'll know the angle to get it back down to there <sighs> 30 minutes is a supposedly assembly time I'm already well into 45 minutes barely got started we are not happy with step three it tells you to slide the strut over this rear axle and I can't tell if it from the picture if it goes this way or that way and then it tells you there's a hole to the front of this part over here in step four and it shows the struts on there and I'm going to have to uh, go to plan B, C, D, and E to figure this out. Might even have to read ahead but this is uh, a stumbling point. I can't tell which way to put that strut on and it will make a difference. Okay, I think I've figured it out. I slid them on so that the f flat end is pointing uh, down at the uh, cardboard instead of up in the air. Because when I put this frame up here, it's going to slide up and fit flat against it. Put it on the other way, it'll be pointing away from it. So when that rotates up to fit on this frame, it'll line up. So when you slide your struts on, don't do it so they're pointing up, do it so they're pointing down. This step uh, is critical and complicated. We're going to attach three pieces, that frame pointing in the correct direction, that axle and struts, and the pan. And I found it setting it on the four tires to balance it and work from underneath is going to probably work out okay. So you have uh, you can work from the top down, loose parts underneath. And I'm going to drop six bolts. The top have hex heads on them. They provide an Allen wrench, uh, or socket heads on them. They provide an Allen wrench for that. And the other side is 13 millimeter. I'll use a socket for that. You could probably use an adjustable wrench too. But so I'm going to drop all the bolts down through the pan and see if I can get them three part, the two loose parts connected to the pan. The directions are quite specific how you got to look at that little wee hole to tell you if you have it pointed in the right direction, but then <laughs> the thing is stamped front. I don't know if you can read that or not. So don't waste your eyeballs trying to line up holes. It's stamped front. So keep that to the front. Cancel that working from underneath. You'll never get them parts on. What I'm going to try now is I have the tub turned on its side, propped up with one tire. It just will bet so I can work on both sides at once, hold the part, the bolt in place. I'm hoping this works out a lot better than upside down because that did not work at all. I don't know why the instructions told you to put these struts on. And we had such a hard time figuring it out because after you start uh, putting your frame on your cart, it just slip right on. You can figure out what direction they go then. Not a problem. I'd skip that step. Just go ahead and put them on after you get your frame balanced on there. I just have one nut in there and I'll make sure that I read ahead to see what all has to get attached by these six bolts that are going through the poly tub into the front frame and the front axle, the rear axle I guess it is. Oh, wait a minute. So when it says front, uh-oh, I'm going to have to turn that around. Ah, oh, jeez. Front is not closest to you. Front of the cart's way out there. I'll have to look at the instructions again. This only takes 30 minutes of, you've already done 12 of them. See, they don't show the pan on the instruction, where the pan is. 
we will have to uh, flip that around. I put the uh, part of the frame marked front towards the front, but this is the rear. The rear has this sloping uh, dump act action on it, on the tray, and the front is flat. So I have to reverse this. So this says rear out here on the end. I have it saying front, but I only have one nut on it, so it's no big deal. But it has to say rear here. Stamp both sides, front and rear. Make sure rear is next to the slope part on your tray. <sighs> to start putting this frame back on, just uh, put one bolt through the tray and one nut on. Just lift the rest hanging there. And that'll keep you from having to hold it in place and try and get all the bolts started at once. Just put the first one in up top. And then uh, it'll hang there while you line the rest of them up. But don't forget, you have to put this piece on too. So I'll use the bolt on the far side to hang with, not the one closest to me because this part's supposed to be on it. <sighs> to make it easier to reach the third bolt, the bolt that was closest to the floor in the prior video uh, segment, I flipped the cart over so I can reach around because I just didn't have long enough arms to reach both sides of that bolt, so just flip the unit over onto its other side so you can reach this one. Believe it or not, I could not get this center bolt here tightened with my socket because it's the only bolt that doesn't have three things. Uh, the tub, a strut, or the tub and a frame. So the bolt head went in further and bottomed out in my socket. Socket wasn't deep enough, so I had to finish tightening it with an adjustable wrench. Note that I'm cutting my little assembly bubbles hardware open one at a time so that I don't get them mixed up. So every time I go to a step, line the parts up and I need screws or bolts, I, that's when I cut the bubble open. I'm now attaching the front frame that we put together first to the rear frame using two bolts, but I also want to tell you, put an extension on your socket drive so that you can get out past these struts or you'll drive yourself crazy banging into struts. And if you get your Allen wrench stuck down against the frame, just lift up on the front end using a dump feature, and then let it back down and that'll free it up. I'm mounting the dump handle with the unit laying on its side. It's fairly simple. But it also demonstrates what I said earlier about needing to assemble it on cardboard because as you flop this thing around, you don't want to screw up the threads on your wheel axles and scratch your uh, tub all up unnecessarily. So the cardboard box that came in makes an excellent work platform. It protects all your parts while you're flipping it around and kicking it or whatever you feel you need to do to get it put together. So. Again, put it together on top of your cardboard box. Now we're getting ready to put the wheels on, tires if you will. 32 PSI is supposed to be in them. I assume that's what's in there. I'm not going to bother checking them right now. But I never met a wheel that didn't like a little bit of grease, so I'm going to put a finger full of grease on the uh, axle there and a little bit on the threads of the nut. So that uh, if it rusts up, I'll be able to get it off years down the road. Take the tire to the gas station or wherever to fill it up. So I'm going to take my grease gun, grease all the wheel parts. I didn't have a metric socket that size, but I tried a three quarter with a uh, that type of uh, teeth on it. It's not a star shape, I forget what they call that. And it fit perfectly. So I used the uh, extension to get up above the rim, and a uh, three-quarter inch socket fit that very, very well. Probably better than a metric would have. So we got one tire on, greased. So I'll put the other three on. Actually, these wheels have a bearing race in them that uh, I believe it spins on. It doesn't turn on that axle. Turns on a bearing race. But we don't need grease down there, but there's grease in there and 
that's just the way it's going to be. So if you don't have a grease gun, just squirt a little oil on them threads so that uh, they don't rust up on you. This is the only thing on this that's not adenized uh, threads to prevent rust. They are blackened though, uh, but uh, I've got to put some kind of lubricant on those threads so in case you have to replace the tire or take it somewhere to get it fixed, it'll be easier getting it off. Contrary to what the diagram shows, set your two pieces of black plastic inside this frame and then bring your pipe in. Because if you put it on your pipe first and try and work it in there, you just can't get it to spread. But if you put the black pieces in there first, ram your back pipe into uh, place, then line up all your holes. I'm going to try and line up on a second hole from the end. There's two sets of holes. They only show one in the diagram, but I'll, uh, I think the second one from the end is going to work best. I don't know why they put two holes in there, just to confuse me. <sighs> you sort of have to use the second hole from the end, or your handle will be twisted and it won't be upright. Uh, also check to make sure your nice smooth nuts are on top, so that your handles... Uh, you're busy working down on this end. If you're not paying attention to this end, you might install it upside down and then uh, have to do it over again. So look at both ends. Use the second hole from that far end back and uh, make sure your nice smooth part of your handle is uh, and your hitch is up towards the top of the cart. Okay, on page three of the instructions, it says clearly at the end of the first paragraph, tools required for assembly, Phillips screwdriver and metric socket set, or two adjustable wrenches. Evidently, in China, this is a Phillips screwdriver. And this, well, we don't know what they call that. Well, I figure China's on the other side of the world, so maybe that's why this is a Phillips screwdriver and this is something else. Over here, see what I did there? This is a Phillips screwdriver and this is an Allen wrench. But in China, Phillips screwdriver. I never used it. And we're done. My assembly time was exactly three hours. I didn't take any breaks. I didn't have to look for any tools. I only lost one washer for about three minutes as it rolled a little bit. And it has this tool tray, which it probably comes in handy, but it really doesn't fit without any weight in it. It kind of pops pops out of its holder like that. Because uh, the poly tub is bowed in a little bit, but maybe with age and a little bit of sunshine it'll fit better. Or if you put some weight in, it'll be fine. There we have it. Four-wheeled combination pull cart, or you can take that D handle off of there and attach it with a clevis pin to your tractor, which is what I'm going to do for the most. At least I think I'm going to do that. And it steers. It's pretty nice. It says it carries 1,400 pounds. And that'll be good for my gardening because my garden is way up there. I hope you enjoyed my video. Check out my other ones. I have about 85 videos on YouTube. Wine trips, other stuff that I've put together, things I've fixed. Uh, some opinions, a few other things. Fixing uh, my wife's board, new computer, that kind of thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is your unconscious mechanic putting together a lawn cart. As I mentioned, it took uh, three hours for me to assemble that. I wasn't in a rush and I had to stand up and straighten out my back a few times. But the lessons learned. Slit the two front corners to open the box down the front like I did. And then flatten it to the floor. It makes a nice place to assemble. So you assemble on the box. Be careful on step three. The rear of the poly tub is sloped. Don't worry about those rear struts until you're bowling it to the tub. Then you'll know how they go on. Don't use an old pilot point 
razor point uh, pen to write your list with and when bolting to the frame lay the unit on its side and when you're lining the front handle uh, watch both ends I stated that in the video so when you're bolting the frame tub lay the unit on its side align the handle while putting the rod handle on the cart so I give the cart an A plus instructions a B minus and me I'll give myself a C I hope you enjoy your cart I'm going to enjoy mine